An overview of the editor. Here you will learn how we have organized our user interface and how to use it to navigate the project efficiently. The project editor's user interface is structured into four areas, the top bar, for navigating through the project, its views, and its editing modes. The input panel on the left, where parameters are entered. The central window, for viewing the project and editing its geometry in real time. And the data panel on the right, for viewing project metrics, also in real time. The last three vary their content depending on the level and editing mode we are in. For example, if we are at the residential unit level in auto mode, the central window will display the floor plan of the apartment, the input panel will have different design options to configure the flat layout, and the data panel will show the area schedule, metrics for that specific flat, and its cost estimate. However, if we are at the floor or site level, this content will be shown according to this one. The top bar is the only element of the interface which available options are always the same. Regardless of the view mode or the level in the project, the elements located here are always the same. Here you can find the tools necessary to navigate through the project, its view modes, and its editing modes. From left to right, we find the file tools, where the floppy disk icon saves the project to our server. The backward arrow undoes the last change made. The forward arrow redoes the last undone change. Next, we locate the view modes. Plans, to work on the project's 2D floor plans. Model, to work on and visualize the project in 3D. And Cost, to work on the budget. Following that is the navigation bar, which is the main tool for moving around the project. Additionally, it works more or less the same in any view mode. It has five levels. The root level, is the project's own name and takes us to the site view if we are in plans or model view mode. However, if we are in cost view mode, it takes us to the budget summary detailing the ratios and indirect construction costs. Next is the site level, where we work with the set of buildings on the plot. It is divided into above grade where the building is created and edited, and below grade where the basement and its circulation are created and edited, optimizing its efficiency. Next is the building level, which indicates which building of the project we are viewing. In model view mode, it takes us to the 3D view of the building. However, in plans view mode, it will default to the typical floor plan view of the building. In cost view mode, it takes us to the budget of that specific building. Next is the floor level, it takes us to the view of the selected floor of the building we are in. Finally, the apartment level, it takes us to the view of the selected unit within the floor and building we are in. At the beginning, we will primarily use the navigation bar to navigate through the project. Later on, we will use the above grade and below grade views to directly access the buildings by clicking on them, as well as the building views to enter the units directly by clicking on them. We can go back up a level using the upward arrow located just before the navigation bar. Additionally, we can easily switch between buildings, floors, or units using the navigation bar itself. The navigation bar works similarly to a web page or the Windows Explorer because our project is also a data structure. There are four editing modes, Auto, Assisted, Manual, and View. However, the first two are grouped under the first button, Auto, and are characterized by being AI-assisted modes that help us generate parts of the design. The editing modes are associated with the project's realization phases, and we should progress from auto mode to manual mode, that is, we progress from the global to the specific. Never the other way around, as if we revert to a previous phase and edit the project, all changes made in subsequent phases will be lost. Therefore, in auto mode, the project is edited using the variables contained in the input panel. In assisted mode, which is within the auto button, we edit the project's geometry, being able to change specific elements ourselves. These types of changes are always made in the central window. We can perform two types of interactions, contour edits, here, we modify the contours of the units or the position of the core. The AI reacts to our changes by adjusting the interior layout of the units we've altered. 
And, of course, it will do so using the unit sizing criteria we provide. And the second types of interaction is the configuration through the contextual menu. In these interactions, we change the use of spaces or configure certain aspects of the core. We encourage you to continue watching the next video to learn more about our platform.